percent loan to value and um, the better interest rate is at 75 percent loan to value so there's that but um, when wherever women gather together failure is impossible Susan B Anthony I wanted to say that since it's Women's History Month which is why um, and I congratulate Angie for putting this together um, that's exciting um, I when we put this slide on here I told media I said Susan B was a looker wasn't she so, <laughs> and I think that's true uh, today. Um, I wanted to show a few pictures of my life outside of mortgage in case you decide you're going to use me as a lender. I want to know what you're dealing with. I'm a dog person. That's camper. Um, notice how I introduced the dog before my dog. Um, that's my daughter Landry. Some of the real estate agents and Angie, of course, that, that are in the room have known me a really long, 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 long time. And so they've known me BK before kids. So nothing but warmed me more fun than the day I went to GLAR and announced that they brought me a baby. And I said, and, and, and people were like, CPS induced, they brought her a baby. And then my other friends, like Angie said, the county agreed to give you a child. <laughs> oh my God. And in November, I was married, I got married. November 27th, I got married. And um, and again, my good friend Angie said, someone agreed to marry you. <laughs> His name is Ben C. Claire up in the top left. Um, that's my mom, my brother, uh, Landry from Christmas Town, and uh, Ben's son, my bonus son, Zachary, who just uh, got uh, graduated A school in the Navy. So we're excited about that. But uh, last life outside of Morgan, and then uh, we were we were voted best in Denton County. Whoop whoop, love that. Uh, I have to tell you that I recently did a class in San Antonio and I had that and I was talking about Best in Denton County and the people in San Antonio, they were like, who cares? You know? <laughs> it's a big deal where I'm from. It's a big deal. So we're proud of that. We're also extremely proud and, and I have a pamphlet up there about Texas State Affordable Housing Corporation. Texas State Affordable Housing Corporation provides grants and they still are providing grants. I know it's a seller's market, but I will tell you, we're doing a ton of these where people are get, being able to purchase a home because they have a grant that helps cover their down payment or their closing costs. It won't cover both. Um, I do an entire one hour CE just on this topic, overcoming down payment hurdle, Texas State Affordable Housing Corporation. You can look this website up, TSAHC. Dot org. It will give you a plethora of information. I recommend that you you know check it out. There's also another section called Texas Financial Toolbox. Texas Financial Toolbox, a plethora of information that can help you along the journey. If you think that your customer might qualify for some type of assistance, stop looking at it as assistance, like it's a negative term. Down payment assistance. Uh, if 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 I've got a teacher that's teaching my kid. They, and they qualify for DPA, they deserve it, you know? Because I teach my kid at home and I'm not, virtual teaching did not go well in my house. Okay? Not well, not well. She's lucky to still be alive and not be on eBay. Okay? I was not intended to be a math teacher. I'm in mortgage and I would have to call and say, I don't know what this funky math you got going on here, but I don't teach this. So, you know, we, our, our police, our firefighters, and anybody else that qualifies. And by the way, on that Texas State Affordable Housing Corporation for the counties that are in this area, the, the income limit is $100,000. So it's not low income. So we have the perception, you gotta get it out of your mind, that your perception. There's a whole class of people out there that think they're disenfranchised because they don't think they can qualify. And I mean, I have, we have a loan right now to him and his wife. They qualify for assistance and they're buying 400,000. That's not nothing, yeah. you know, 450. I mean, we have some examples of that. So just keep that in mind. But I, we t I talk about that a lot and I talk about our experience with mortgage and we have an online application and all that. Uh, these are the products, kind of just what I was talking about, Texas State Affordable mm -hmm. Housing. I talk about VA home loans all the time. VA home loans are very important because our veterans, they have 100% financing, no mortgage insurance premium. Some people don't even have to have a funding fee on it. It's an amazing product. In the state of Texas, less than 15% of our veterans are utilizing this benefit. And I, and I, we, we, me day and I were on the phone with a veteran just the other day, you know, and sometimes he, and I, I kid you not, I had it all set up. And then he's like, so do you think I should do conventional? No. <laughs> 
You know, I mean, no, I didn't in his particular case, but sometimes it's just education. They just don't know. So if you're, if you got somebody, you're showing a property, you're talking to a customer, you're talking to a roofer, ask them if they're a veteran, you know, thank them for their service, you know, and they qualify for stuff. So that's important. I uh, talked earlier about America's Finest, which is a separate program that Premier offers with $500 towards their uh, closing costs. By the way, you can stack programs if you've got a customer and they qualify for more than one thing, they can have them all. They have all those programs. Um, FHA, FHA, uh, the greatest thing that happened in uh, for an FHA loan in the past year, the greatest update is the fact that we don't have to hit someone with their student loans at a full 1%. So you've got all these kids that got student loans line item after line item and if there's the, the, the payment has been deferred whatever that total amount is it used to be we'd have to place one percent of that of the balance and put a payment in there now we only have to put a half a percent so again it opened up a whole new area of people that can qualify you want to work with a lender that understands student loans and that understands what to again i just got a loan literally yesterday and that she, they told her she didn't qualify. And I looked at it and I'm like, uh, yeah, you do. I'm thinking, why? I kept trying to figure out why they told her she didn't qualify. And I think it's because they were hitting her 1% on each line item for student loan. It makes a big difference. So um, that's important. We also like Freddie Mac for student loans on conventional. Again, I, don't, I only have to hit them at half a percent on each line item. So that's an important uh, thing. Conventional, uh, conventional now, you've got home ready, you've got home possible. Um, there's all kinds of different avenues, but a conventional, standard conventional loan for a first time home buyer only requires 3% down. Um, regular conventional, if they've already owned a home before, they can put 5% down. If I can say anything to anyone today, and you can hear me out loud, stop thinking that a buyer is less qualified when you're receiving the offer because it's only 5% down instead of 30% down. You got to stop thinking that. Do you really want someone in a home that's blown all their cash and they got no dime left for their first mortgage payment? I mean, it may not matter, but in our market, we should care about that because no one, they're not any more or less qualified if they're putting 5% down or 30% down. So from a, from a realtor state standpoint, if you've got two offers side by side, I see you back, if you've got two side <coughs> offers side by side, um, and, and this offer is more, but this offer is less, but this one's putting down 5% and this one's putting down 30%, you know, they're, they're not any less qualified. And in some cases, you've got people that just wanna hold on to the cash. Like, well, that's the recommendation as a lender that we provide. You know, we want them to have money in the bank. It's a better approval if they have money in the bank. It really is. Becky. So appraisal is the one concern, you know, when we're looking at these. So let's say I'm represented by and she really just wants to put down 5%, but we're in a more vulnerable situation. She has enough money that she could put down 20%. So we make the offer at 20%. She gets it. Then it doesn't appraise. Well, I was just going to say, let's say it, it does appraise. So then can she go back and, you know, what's the process for you then? After no the appraisal. It's no, no Yeah, the appraisal comes in and the appraisal is about, it, it, well, there's two, I have two answers to your question. The appraisal comes in and the appraisal is at value. Mm -hmm. um, then with the moment the appraisal comes in, we have a, new, a brand new conversation. Okay, we disclosed the loan at this. Those were initial closing, initial disclosures. Are we staying the same path? The properties at value, you want to put down more or less money. Right. Um, and then we make the adjustment at that point. We've already got an underwriting approval and then we just resub with the updated numbers. The second thing is if it doesn't come in at value and she wants to put down 5% to make up the difference of the value, then you can do that as well. You know, so it kind of gives you that leeway. And I think, you know, I mean, I, I have some pretty candid conversations with seller agents. Like I, all the people that we qualify, we always offer to call the listing agent. If, it, if they just give me the phone number, the address or whatnot, and they'll call the listing agent and just say, listen, I've had this person meeting as a property. Um, they've worked at their job for four years. Now there's limit, I, I'm, I find it interesting some of the questions I get asked. 
you know, that I cannot tell that, you know, I cannot give you intimate details of, well, have they ever paid anything late? To, to, what's their credit score? You know, I mean, it's a very involved kind of, kind of questions. But we, within the framework, letting them know that we have already looked. What you want is you want lenders that look at income, credit, and assets in detail, you know, that there's no surprises. Um, we do have buyers that surprise us. We've got one that we're, hold, we're doing one of these. If he buys a car between now and funding, I might kill him because we, <laughs> he has had some surprises. <laughs> what was your quote, Joy? I was just curious. If you do change the loan terms mm -hmm. because it states it in the contract as, you know, a 20% and then they decide later after things have happened they want to change it to a 5%, let's just say. Do we have to amend that contract? You don't have to amend the, um, you. Uh, you don't have to admit, admit, I probably will need an updated third party finance, you know. Um, but you yeah. can amend it. Uh, you can't just mark through it. And you can't just mark through it. You no. can't just go. No. No, I don't need a whole new contract. contract. I do need an that. amendment. Do you need no, to as disclose. a broker, you want the agent to so do the right thing. Do you need to disclose that to the seller side? You know, to the oh yeah, you, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. You would. Now, sometimes I can, if I know what we're doing, sometimes I can get an amendment. Like you can give me the unsigned one so that we can do the loan, and then everybody can sign it at closing to update it. Now, don't the, you need to tell the seller? I know what he's thinking. You need to tell him. Don't okay. spring it on him. Well, you know? I'm just curious. No, no. As a listing agent, if I were to see a thirty percent down, and then you know, lo and behold, they want to change it on me. I red flags go up. Why are we changing now? Well, you know, if they, if because they qualify for either one, I but they're changing. That. If they change because the appraisal didn't make and they need the difference, well, but that's regardless one regardless of the appraisal, though. You know, I know they have the. If it's not signed by the seller, let's say the seller says, "No, I don't want to do that. Uh -huh. you know, this is not what we agreed to." Then, you know. Obviously, they would not sign. I, I, I just think what I'm trying to convey to you the best that I can is that the difference in some cases, like if you take a $200,000 loan and you do the math, and the difference between 20% down and 5% down literally is 50 bucks a month. You know, and, and, and some people would prefer to hang on to that cash. Oh, I get and, that. And, yeah, and, yeah. and, and what, what we're experiencing is, I mean, I've literally have had several listing agent conversations where this person is more qualified because they're putting down more than than this person because they're putting down less, and that's simply not the case. You know, it has nothing to but do that's with what that. people think. But it's a perception. Right. That, and if we don't work at, uh, at changing that perception by me saying it out loud, to, to then, you know, we, we have to work on that, you know, because it's not... I mean, that's the yeah, and then there, then there is the appraisal thing, you know. See, see, can I just real quickly? I mean, you can't talk to your broker. Definitely, you've got to talk to your broker about this. Also, you got to talk to the seller, and then see what is that going to change anything? The outcome for the seller, and what does the broker advise you to do? But you got to go to your broker. Mm -hmm. I get extra time because they're doing my questions now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so anyway, products. We talked about the different products and things like that. Um, and um, these are first-time homebuyer statistics, which I think are very helpful. 33% uh, of all homebuyers are first-time homebuyers right now, which is crazy, right? Very crazy on uh, some of these statistics. And I won't just completely drive you nuts and bore you with them, but. Um, that I think they're important uh, statistics. This is a, uh, something I recently put together. Where have we been? Where's 2020? And where are we in 2022? It's the biggest jump of conforming loan limits in my professional career. I'm telling you, over a short time. And for real estate agents, that if you like that, I can co-brand that flyer, and you can uh, send that out. If you want to co-brand it, let me know. Just send me an email and a picture and stuff, and we, you can co-brand it, put it on social media, whatever you want to do. But the conforming loan limit at 647-200, huge, you know, that's huge. And I know when I was a first time home buyer, and that's been a minute ago, but when I was a first time home buyer, if you'd have said, you know, that, that, or, I don't know, what I would have, it was, I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> right? I don't even know how to say it out loud. Uh, I did a, a podcast called On the House on Credit. It's a 30 minute podcast that I did alongside with T-Shack. So if you uh, take a picture of that QR code, um, you, while you're going on your 30-minute walk, it's a nice little podcast, like I said, over credit. talks about a lot of things. 
and it's helpful. You can also share it with your clients. Uh, and uh, uh, and I, uh, I, I guess the thing is, is that when Angie asked me to do this, I was sitting there trying to think how I'm a hopeful person. I'm an inverse paranoid. I think the whole world's out to help me, right? That was kind of a joke. <laughs> Landed flat. But uh, but I, I was I was I was I was born in Dallas. I was raised in Arlington. My parents rented my childhood home for 19 years, and they didn't rent my childhood home for 19 years because they couldn't pay. They just didn't know what to do. And what happens is time gets away from us, right? If anybody in here that has kids, I know this is true because when I tell you guys that Landry is 10 years old and will be 11 in November, you think I just got her yesterday, you know? So time goes like this. So we have clients that say, I'm gonna do it six months from now. When's a good time to do it? When's a good time to buy? You know, I'm gonna do it six months from now. I'm gonna do it, six months turns into six years, like that, right? And so we, we want to urge them to try to get into the game even though the game is challenging and difficult. I wanna share with you my concerns, my, my legitimate concerns about our market and my legitimate reason for saying you better put on your seatbelt because it's gonna be a bumpy ride. A year ago, I stood in front of a group of people multiple times and said, you cannot write checks without consequence. There are consequences when the government writes checks to people, right? And we that's where we're in. A year later, guess what? We're having some consequences. And that doesn't matter who you voted for, so just stop it, okay? Don't get it agree. I don't want to hear about it. But for the these are my concerns, my personal concerns. With doing mortgage, I look at loans every day. Forbearance. Forbearance did not mean forgiveness. That's not what it meant. We have a bunch of people, we look at it a lot, that took forbearance, even when they didn't need it. And they now don't understand what to do, you know, because they took forbearance and it doesn't mean forgiveness and you still owe that money, you know, on their mortgages. That has a, a, a collision course with the fact that you have a bunch of people on student loans that they were de automatically deferred. They didn't ask them to be deferred, they thought it was a gift. Those student loans were deferred. Well, that's not going to go on forever, okay? So right now with our young people, the two biggest struggles we have with people qualifying is student loans and car payments. Car payments. I, I mean, literally had uh, Ben was, uh, my husband's also a loan officer because I'm not smart. I married a loan officer. So. <laughs> but no, he had a customer and the kid had a truck payment that was $900 a month. So we're like, $900 a month? Your truck payment's nine hundred dollars a month. Like, just have a pillow because you're sleeping there. You know, so that's your new address. So those are the two things that we struggle with: student payments and um, and uh, car loans. But the forbearance thing, low inventory. We know, right? We're dealing with low inventory. That's a it's a concern. Um, I think what happens is is I have a very good friend of mine, very up twenty five years at Bank of America, and I had a very lengthy conversation with him because they, uh, he's on the asset side, so he sees stuff. And he, he's like, well, the um, inventory's about to take care of itself because forbearance, you know? So you see where I'm heading, and I'm trying to be positive, but I'm telling you, it could take care of itself with the forbearance stuff. Um, taxes. So many people took unemployment in 2021. Whether they need it or not, they took unemployment in 2021, and they didn't realize that they have to pay taxes on it. Because in 2020, up to 10,000, they didn't, right? So, so the, you see the collision course, forbearance, unemployment, and they owe taxes on it. Guess what? The IRS is not going to say, ah, it's okay. <laughs> you don't have to. They're going to. So you, there's a collision course that's going to take place with a lot of people. And those are, that's, those are my concerns. 2021, got to pay taxes on your unemployment. When my, when my mama said there was no free lunch, she wasn't kidding, okay? <laughs> No free lunch. Um, but we talked about unemployment, and then the final thing: world events. I get that question a lot. What's what what what's going to happen? How's the world events going to impact us? And um, you know, I wish I had a crystal ball. I have a great deal of a great deal. I watch the news just like y'all, and I have a great deal of empathy. I always feel like that we also need to put the put it in perspective when we're watching the news because you get in what they want you to see. So just keep kind of keep that in mind. But I will tell you that when, you know, when we're in a situation where there is war somewhere else, it definitely impacts our pocketbook. You guys can feel it.